Hello to all of my comic book and Star Wars geeks, Dante D here, and welcome to the channel, the podcast where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. I hope everybody had a wonderful and fantastic holiday and a very, very happy new year. This is the first episode that we are doing in 2022, so of course I wish you all the best for 2022 and I th hope everyone stayed safe over the holidays and really a lot has happened since the last time we did an episode here most notably the uh, new show about Boba Fett the book of Boba Fett launched on Disney Plus and I think about two episodes have come out since and uh, I mean at the time of the recording of this uh, episode and this isn't going to be a review Actually, it's not going to be a review at all, even though you're seeing some promotional, a promotional picture here for the Book of Boba Fett. Uh, when this show launched, it actually got me thinking, how did a character like Boba Fett, who really only had maybe six minutes of screen time and even fewer lines, really, in The Empire Strikes Back, go from being such a minor character and exploding in popularity to the point where so many years later he gets his own series like how the heck did that happen has anyone really sat down and thought about it and i really don't think there is a right or wrong answer as to why boba fett just exploded in popularity Actually, I don't think anyone really has a right or wrong answer as to why Star Wars in general exploded in popularity. As Mark Hamill said in an episode, or sorry, in an interview uh, not long ago, I think it was around the time of um, when The Force Awakens was released. He said, 40 years ago, we caught a lightning in a bottle. He And basically what he's saying is the... The success of Star Wars is never going to be replicated. And, you know, all the stars aligned properly for that movie to become the success that it did. And I think the same can be said about a character like Boba Fett. I think just all the stars aligned properly. And I don't think there'll ever be another minor character in any sort of media that will be so minor yet get so much uh, notoriety as such a popular character ever again. If you can think of another character that has kind of that Boba Fett effect, uh, please let me know in the comments or reach out to me on social media because I'm, I'm really curious to know. I don't think there is another character like Boba Fett who was originally just meant to be a minor character but exploded to be this you know, juggernaut in um, in the franchise in which he appears. So um, that being said, I think in order to try to understand why Boba Fett became so popular, we actually have to go back and take a look at Boba Fett's history. So most people watching this and more casual fans would probably uh, know, not know the real first appearance of Boba Fett. Okay. Uh, most people would think that Boba Fett made his first appearance in The Empire Strikes Back. He made his first appearance on screen, but that's actually not true. Hardcore fans will know that Boba Fett actually made his first appearance at a parade, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> yes, on September 24th, 1978, this new character, Boba Fett, appeared alongside Darth Vader at the San Anselmo, California parade. And that's where he made his debut. I actually didn't know this. Uh, just in researching this episode is when, when I found this out. Apparently now, because Boba Fett's becoming so popular, this is actually becoming more common knowledge. 
But uh, I actually didn't know this. And I thought it was super, super interesting to see Boba Fett and Darth Vader appear alongside a bunch of (laughs) cars with clowns and balloon animals and, you know, a bunch of family fun. When these characters, when you really think about it, are the farthest thing from being super family friendly. Some of you out there are probably thinking too, like why Son and Selmo? I know that's the first question I asked is why would Boba Fett and Darth Vader go to some parade in San Anselmo? Well, in looking that up, apparently uh, Lucasfilm's headquarters wasn't too far from uh, San Anselmo. So that's why (laughs) they decided to have Darth Vader and Boba Fett uh, in that parade. But why Boba Fett all, you know, in general? You know, we had Darth Vader, really cool costume, iconic costume design, just so amazing, right? Uh, and then you have Boba Fett, who has an equally amazing costume design. And from what I understand, uh, in the original drafts of Star Wars, there were some plans to make Darth Vader not a Dark Lord or a Dark Lord of the Sith, but more so a uh, a bounty hunter. But obviously Darth Vader became who we know and love. But George Lucas wanted to keep the idea of the bounty hunter in his films and just kind of incorporate it somehow. Because at the end of the day, Star Wars was meant to be a space Western, and I honestly don't think there's anything more westerny than a character like Boba Fett, who's who's a who's an outlaw, a bounty hunter, right? It's uh, very very cool. So, at the end of the day, we ended up getting a character like Boba Fett, right? His first screen appearance, believe it or not, though, was not in The Empire Strikes Back. Believe it or not, his first Screen appearance was in the much maligned Star Wars holiday special, uh, which I've never seen. I would love to hear from you if you've seen the Star Wars holiday special. Apparently, you can find uh, versions of the Star Wars holiday special online. I've never actually gone out to look for it, but it was so poorly received that I don't think Lucasfilm ever released it in some sort of hard copy form. Uh, I think they just kind of wanted people to forget about that, but uh, people do not forget when you have something like the Star Wars Holiday Special. I think it's actually kind of becoming kind of a cult classic now (laughs) for how bad it is, right? But uh, nevertheless, that's where Boba Fett made his brief first screen appearance. And I think this probably got people's eyebrows raising. And this, for a lot of people, was probably the best thing about the uh, Star Wars holiday special. Because for many people, this was the first time they've seen Boba Fett. 99.98% of people who were into Star Wars would not have seen Boba Fett at the San Anselmo parade. And actually, I'd like to hear from you if... A, you actually were at that parade. That'd be really cool to hear from someone who actually was at the parade. Uh, And B, if you even knew that that was actually Boba Fett's first appearance. Again, would love to hear from you all. Love interacting with you. And following the Star Wars Holiday Special, we ended up with a uh, Boba Fett action figure. So before we even see Boba Fett in the work in which he's most known for, and that is the the Empire Strikes Back, we saw him in a parade in the Star Wars Holiday Special, and then Kenner released their famous Boba Fett action figure, which to this day is probably one of the most sought-after Star Wars figures from the Kenner line, which is the first line of Star Wars toys. Uh, I think it like an original Boba Fett in box is 
it's in the thousands. I haven't even bothered to look because I personally, I don't, I don't collect vintage toys. I mean, I like action figures as much as the next person and I'll pick up an action figure, but I'm not the type of person to drop huge amounts of cash on, uh, on action figures, mostly because I have a huge comic book collection. And, uh, I think my wife would kill me if I started collecting something else because on top of comic books, I also have a lot of graphic novels and a lot of dorky novels like the star Wars EU books. So yeah, I only have so much space here. (laughs) So after that toy came out and people went nuts for Boba Fett, we have him in his first screen, big screen appearance. (laughs) And that is the empire strikes back. And I think this here, the action figure and the appearance of Boba Fett in the Star Wars Holiday Special was inadvertently uh, a great marketing strategy for Lucasfilm at the time because they didn't know how much mystery they were creating around this character by basically just kind of giving people little bits and pieces of him uh, before he made his actual screen appearances. So, you know, you see him in the uh, Star Wars Holiday Special. Then you see, you get this toy of this character who has this really super cool armor. He's got this cool gun and just an amazing design. Uh, he, he had a rocket on his back. I don't think this actual, this toy actually had the rocket on it. Uh, they did release a prototype of the Boba Fett figure with a rocket and it launched from the back, but due to safety concerns, the, the figure never actually made it to market, but kids getting this toy were probably going wild with their imaginations. They didn't know anything about this character. So you know, it was anyone's guess who this character was, what his intentions were, what what he was meant to do. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy, right? It's people's imaginations just were going nuts, right? Especially kids that were playing with this figure at the time. And when there's an unknown, I really must say people just love, love theorizing. Uh, I'm sure back in uh, in Starlog magazine, which was a science fiction magazine back in the uh, in the 1970s that uh, featured Star Wars a lot. Once it started becoming popular, uh, they would have uh, these rumors. Uh, they would publish rumors about what was going to be in the next movie, and they were speculating hardcore about what was going to be happening in uh, in The Empire Strikes Back. And I could just imagine what they, what people were thinking about this character, Boba Fett. So now we we have him in The Empire Strikes Back, and uh, frankly, I think people were a little disappointed. <laughs> I mean, because he only, I think, I, th- I honestly think people that were really following Star Wars really closely at the time, you know, were probably expecting more from from Boba Fett in the film. Uh, You know, a lot of people's theories, uh, which you actually can read in old, uh, old editions of Starlog magazine. uh, A lot of those, uh, some of the theories were even stating things like, you know, Oh, Han Solo is going to uh, go face to face with Darth Vader with a lightsaber. I know there's some, they were theorizing that and they're theorizing there was going to be this big reveal. And obviously in the empire strikes back, it's probably not a spoiler now. The big reveal was Darth Vader is Luke's father. Uh, but people that were hoping to learn a little bit more about this mysterious Boba Fett character's uh, character was, you know, probably they were probably very disappointed because again, he only got maybe six minutes of screen time. And um, to say he was a man of few words in the film is uh, <laughs> is an understatement. He didn't really have that that many lines, but I have to say from a cinematic perspective, the way uh, Boba Fett was portrayed in that film was just kind of genius. They did a lot of amazing character building with this character, um, 
with the minimal amount of time that he actually appeared on screen and we could we i could probably do a really in-depth character analysis of of boba fett but that i could be here probably for a really long time talking about it uh and and believe it or not i'm actually not a huge boba fett fan uh i never really understood what all the hype was about boba fett uh and i think part of the reason i'm making this episode right now is is as a way to kind of maybe try to explain it to myself because you know up until the book of boba fett came out i never i never understood the hype around this character now mind you i'm one of those people that really enjoys star wars more for the um for the for the fantasy aspect of it you know like the uh the, the whole you know jedi and, and 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 the code and the war between the jedi and the sith i i find that super super interesting i was never really into like you know the characters with the who were more gunslingers i was more into the lightsaber characters but nevertheless you know i still was able to grow attached to characters like han solo uh job of the hut <laughs> you know uh didn't it didn't prevent me at all from enjoying other characters in star wars but you know Going, going back to Boba Fett, like I said, uh, just amazing characterization in, in that film. You know, we have him very stoic. He has a very kind of mysterious voice and it sounds, uh, you know, mechanical, uh, you know, with, with, with the mask and, and the uh, vocabulator uh, that's installed in the mask. And he seems to be the only bounty hunter that Darth Vader speaks directly to so we got the big man Darth Vader he's only speaking to Boba Fett like what what is it about this character that's that's so special but the funny thing about this character is that he's a bounty hunter but he does pretty much absolutely nothing <laughs> to get Han Solo he does literally nothing to catch Han Solo Darth Vader is the one that catches Solo freezes him in carbonite and then just gives him over <laughs> So, I mean, what really did did he do in that movie? I don't even think he shot one salvo from his blaster in that in, the, in that film, from what I can recall. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but nevertheless, there there's Boba Fett. So after the Empire Strikes Back hit theaters, I think obviously people were. Uh, we're probably focusing more on the huge reveal that Darth Vader is Luke's father. But on the sidelines, those those people that were intrigued by Boba Fett really <laughs> still were hoping for, for more from this character and to understand more about this character. And of course, uh, Lucasfilm and, uh, and Marvel at the time really picked up on the popularity of this character because of course they had to feature him in their classic star wars title from the 1970s if you haven't read the original marvel run on star wars i suggest you do the stories definitely are a little dated but they are truly enjoyable i love the original classic star wars uh run done by marvel Classic, classic, just amazing. Obviously, the original issues now are a lot more expensive, you know, with all these people trying to collect anything Star Wars, including the comic books. But uh, if you get a chance, try to check out the uh, the Epic Collections or any of the omnibuses that Marvel has released containing all of the original Star Wars stories because uh, they're, they're just great. And it's really kind of interesting to see... Um, how Marvel was dealing with the franchise because, of course, this franchise was not developed back then. I mean, all the lightsabers were, like, red at the beginning. Jabba the Hutt is not a slug at all. He looks completely different. So it's really kind of cool to see how Marvel was trying to create something from nothing, right? Because there there was just so, so many unknowns with... Uh, with the Star Wars franchise, but of course, Boba Fett makes his first comic book appearance in Star Wars number 42, and I think 
this is uh, this is actually um, part of Marvel's comic book adaptation of The Empire Strikes Back. So the original Star Wars run uh, done by Marvel, I think the first six or seven issues of the original run, so like one to seven, is an adaptation of A New Hope. Very well done. And then I think the adaptation for The Empire Strikes Back starts in uh, in issue 38 and continues on for a good six, seven issues. But uh, yeah, so you have these kids and these adults and whoever's watching Star Wars at the time, they see Boba Fett on the screen. Now they're seeing him in the comic books. They didn't get enough of Boba Fett, so now they are wanting to see more and and their thirst for this character and who he is and all the mystery behind the character just is is perpetuated because not enough was given in the empire strikes back and they're really hoping to see it in return of the jedi because obviously with the ending of the empire strikes back people knew that there had to be a sequel to wrap up the whole star wars story then we get Return of the Jedi. And if you were a Boba Fett fan watching Return of the Jedi back in the early 80s, I'm sure you would have been super, super disappointed with uh, how Boba Fett was quote unquote killed off. Obviously, we know he's not dead because of the book of Boba Fett and how that's all explained, but uh, it was actually kind of funny. And I remember the first time I saw Return of the Jedi when I was a kid, I laughed so hard at how unceremoniously Boba Fett was killed off because, like I said, I was never a huge Boba Fett fan and all the kids at my school were so obsessed with Boba Fett. So when I'm watching uh, Return of the Jedi, I could, I could almost see George Lucas doing that scene on purpose just to kind of poke fun at the Boba Fett fans saying like, I don't know why you like this character. He like, he doesn't do anything, but you guys like him. So here I'm going to poke fun at the fact that you like this character because you know, you think he's so badass, but really he's not. So we have Han Solo going Boba Fett, Boba Fett pretty much saying like, Oh my God, he's such, he's such an amazing, such, such a famous bounty hunter. I don't want to get a glimpse of him. Turns around. Boom, sets his jetpack off, sends him into the Sarlacc pit. And I just thought that was hilarious um, how he was killed off. If you were a Boba Fett fan around the time that uh, that the original Star Wars uh, trilogy came out, I would really like to know how you felt about how Boba Fett was killed off, quote unquote, in Return of the Jedi. I thought it was hilarious, but... I uh, can't imagine a lot of uh, Boba Fett fans were happy about that. <laughs> but even after this character supposedly was killed off, uh, his legacy lived on. People did not stop loving him at all. The comic books, the original Marvel comic books, actually did a story in which Boba Fett escapes the Sarlacc pit. So even before we see the escape of Boba Fett from the Sarlacc pit in the Mandalorian, like 35 years before, we see him escaping in a Marvel comic book. I think that is just incredible. So obviously Marvel tried to continue the lore behind this character and try to give some substance to, uh, the character because that's what people wanted it really is it wasn't until uh the birth of the star wars eu in the novels that we started seeing a little bit more development with uh with boba fett so there's a whole trilogy by kw jeter uh that dealt with the Boba Fett character. It's actually the, uh, I think it's called the Boba Fett trilogy or the Bounty Hunter trilogy or something. 
Uh, I think it's called The Bounty Hunter Wars, but it deals heavily with Boba Fett. I actually have these books on my shelf. haven't read them yet, but uh, they consist of uh, the Mandalorian armor, uh, is that hard merchandise in the in the slave ship? Uh, from what I hear, they're they're pretty good books. Uh, my friend Ben from uh, Star Wars Timeline actually did a review on these books, and I highly recommend checking it out. So we have these novels, which I know are legends, but you know what? I firmly believe canon is what you make it. And just because these books are now considered legend and not official canon does not mean they're not worth your time. They are totally worth your time for sure you also see uh, a boba fett appearing quite frequently in uh and the han solo trilogy uh which is considered to be one of the best the best star wars books some of the best star wars books ever ever written so highly recommend uh checking those out too and obviously, after we see Boba Fett in the novels, he continued to make appearances in uh, in comics, and also, and uh, he played a somewhat of a significant role in uh, was it um, in Attack of the Clones in the in the prequel trilogy. We see him in uh, Attack of the Clones, and his origin is kind of dealt with a little bit. He's the um, he's the clone, unaltered clone son of uh, of Jango Fett. I have to say, even with his uh, his origin kind of being explained in Attack of the Clones, didn't really make me like the character any more than I already did. I mean, I thought it was cool that they uh, that they explained the origin of Boba Fett. I really didn't think that Boba Fett and Jango Fett really needed to be in the film. I think they were just kind of. I mean, I thought it was cool how. George Lucas incorporated Django and and Boba into the whole um, clone scheme, but uh, again, I don't really think they were super essential to the film. And uh, I mean, they could have they could have cloned anyone really uh, to to make the clones for the Clone Wars, right? But uh, I don't know. That's just uh, that's just my opinion. And now in the new canon, we have Disney giving the Mandalorian characters, being Boba Fett and the actual Mandalorian, so much respect. Uh, I've watched both The Mandalorian and the new show, The Book of Boba Fett, and I have to say I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying them both they're just amazing i'm actually i actually can't wait for the new episode of uh, the book of boba fett to hit disney plus i kind of wish they would just kind of release the whole season so you can binge watch it kind of hate how you have to wait but again that's that's the era we live in right when no one wants to wait for the tv shows anymore <laughs> uh, i remember back in the day this is like back in the day right when you had to wait to find out what happened right that was especially frustrating with uh with Dragon Ball Z, I remember. I remember watching Dragon Ball Z. Like one new episode would come out, and then there would be like reruns for like four weeks until the the next <laughs> new episode would hit. It was super frustrating, but uh, that's probably a topic for another another episode. But at the end of the day, Boba Fett. We've gone through his history. He's become increasingly popular over the years. Why? And why? Well, why did he become so popular? And I don't really think there is a right or wrong answer. I think the main reasons that he's popular boil down to a few things. One of them is the cool armor. He has cool armor. He had a really cool toy, right? So obviously people are going to like the character if he has cool armor and a cool toy. He's mysterious. The whole mystery behind the character really facilitated his rise to popularity because people love what's unknown especially if the unknown looks interesting people want to know more and people like to create theories i mean take a look today i mean on youtube and and you know in podcasts people post tons of videos speculating about 
things and, and creating theories about things in their favorite media franchises. Uh, can I can't imagine what it was like back in the uh, in the seventies and eighties. You know, people making up their own backstories and just letting their imaginations run wild with this character, right? So we have the mysterious nature of the character as well as the cool armor. I think though it, it really just boils down to those two things. Uh, I would, but I would really like to hear from you. Why do you think Boba Fett has become so popular? Popular to the point where in literature there is a there is a uh, an effect named after him. It's actually called the Boba Fett effect, and that is when a, a particular character, minor character in a, in a book or a movie becomes popular uh and i think that that effect is uh is aptly named but again i'd like to hear from you all let me know why you think boba fett became such a popular character reach out to me in the comments if you're watching this on youtube if you're listening to this as a podcast reach out to me on social media love interacting with you and Obviously, love chatting with you all about anything geeky. It's been a pleasure. That's all I really have to say about this topic for today. Always love hanging out with you all. And I wish you all, once again, a very happy new year and a great 2022. And I'm looking forward to doing many more episodes and growing this podcast and this channel more in 2022. 2022 but that of course can only happen with your help so please come hang out with me weekly to talk about all things geeky until next time this is dante d signing off i will see you all in the next episode